Hi there, it's Ben Halsall, and in this quick tutorial we're going to have a look at how we improve the brightness and contrast of a darker image in Final Cut Pro. Now this could be a video or a still image, the process is essentially the same. So we have um, a darker image here, and the first thing that we need to do when we're doing any kind of color correction, which is what we're doing when we're improving the brightness and contrast, is bring up our video scope. So we're going to come to the view menu at the top here and show our video scope. So you can see the shortcut so that is command and seven. Now the other thing I want to do is hide my windows on the left hand side here. So I'm going to come to window, show in workspace and hide the sidebar and also hide the browser. So we can stretch this out and really want to see the video scopes here in a bit more depth. So we have first of all the waveform that we're looking at now and the vector scope. And the waveform helps us to look at the brightness and contrast of an image and see where the color information is. In this instance, we have a lot of color information in this darker area of the image. And we're looking at the waveform from left to right. So the left-hand side of the image, so the right-hand side of the image is the same as what's being displayed in our waveform. And then we have the vector scope, which shows us how much saturation is in our image. And we can see that there's very little color in our image we might expect for instance, if we're looking at this red, green, and blue image, for there to be color throughout the image, and we can see in this yellow truck, we have this big spike of yellow out here. So we're looking here at the, the color in that image. So it's important, first of all, to be able to read your image, and you can learn to do that over time by looking at different images and always referring to the vector scope and the waveform. For this, we'll stick with the waveform. So now let's jump into improving the brightness and contrast of this image. So if we come to Window, and show in workspace. We want to make sure we've got the inspector visible and this is where we access a lot of our effects and our tools when we're working within Final Cut Pro. So if we make sure we've got that up, which will show up across here on the right hand side, we can come to this little triangle and this will show us the color correction tools that we have. And we have three main tabs here, the color, the saturation and the exposure. So we're going to be working the exposure tab up here and we have the, the master exposure and then these three round buttons which are the darker areas of the image, the shadows, the mid-tones and then also the highlights or the lighter areas of the image. So if we come straight to the master slider here we can slide this up and you can see straight away we brighten up the image and as we do that it kind of washes out a little bit. We're losing a lot of that white or lighter parts of the image, the highlights above this 100% mark. And this highlights an important point. We want to keep as much color information as possible between the 100% mark at the top here and the 0% mark at the bottom here. Anything that is above those or below the zero will essentially become blown out. As you can see in this image, we end up with a very white sky and a very washed out image. So we'll pull that down just a little bit. We want to lift this up and then we're going to moderate what we've done here by coming to the shadows in our image and we can pull those down and we're again making that image a bit darker and we can then work with the midtones and the highlights and we can just work between these three parts of the image and decide what it is that we want to be visible within our image. We're still getting some very white areas, so areas above 100% in the sky, but for this particular image I'm mostly concerned about this uh, road part of the image. Okay, so you can see quite quickly we've improved our image. We can see that there's a lot more color detail moved up into the 50 to 75 percent mark. And if we want to kind of check before and after, we can uncheck this little blue box here, which will turn off our correction and turn it back on. And we can see the difference in that waveform monitor when we do that. We can also add a bit more saturation to our image as well. And when we add saturation, we'll want to look at the vector scope. So we'll turn on the vector scope and you can see we've got a kind of desaturated image. There's a little bit of green in there, uh, but we can increase that saturation by pushing this right up. And actually, even when we push this right up to the top, we're not really oversaturating anything. Everything is well within the range of what will be considered like a good quality image. So we can push this even further if we want to, add a bit more saturation in there for the highlights or desaturate parts of the image. So we might want the mid-tones to have a bit of saturation, but the darker areas of the image to be brighter. So we can moderate what we're getting with, again, these master saturation, the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights. 
And then for color, we would really look at this if we wanted to do some color correction, which we don't for this image. But if you take the master slider and just pop it up to the middle here, you can see we're adjusting that whole image, which is mostly in the darker parts of the image. And we can see our vector scope going a little crazy as we whiz round those different parts of the image. So if you want a very cool image, you might want to add some blue in there. If you want to warm your image up or make it seem like a, an old style photo, then you might want to add some orange and red uh, to the image here. If we've done something like this, where we've played around with a color and then we're like, well, that really doesn't look right and we want to reset it. Um, for any one of these three tabs, we can reset what we have here. So if we come up, you can see we've got this hooked arrow and we can click that and we can now reset that to the original uh, color setup, which we'll leave for this image. Let's have a quick look at a very basic animation that we can do within our color correction tools here. And we'll look at this for the, the saturation. So if we wanted to move from a black and white image, say, to a saturated image, we can do that um, by making keyframes for our saturation options within our color board. So we can add a keyframe for our color board up here and then we can come back in time and I'm just going to come back a second or two and I'm going to pull this saturation for the entire image right down so we'll get a black and white image and now when we play through this we'll actually increase the saturation throughout that image and you can animate anything in Final Cut Pro wherever you see these little diamonds um, to add keyframes. So that's a quick overview of raising up um, an image as we can see happening in our animation here. So we're going from black and white to the slightly better and brighter quality image. Um, and this should give you a good intro into how to work with the basics of improving the brightness and contrast of your images in Final Cut Pro. So I hope that's been useful. If you enjoyed that video, then please hit the subscribe button. There'll be lots more Final Cut Pro videos coming up online. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.